It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. Believe it or not, I have a beer from an Australian bistro brewery. It's Frenchie's Bistro. This can has travelled right the way across the world by the fantastic mech who sends us beers from Australia. This is Frenchie's Astrolabe. It's a red beer de garde. Which I'm really interested in trying because I haven't had a I haven't had a beer de garde in years, years and years and years. It's a French style of beer, a, a, a traditional French style of beer. That I I just find terrific that you know this style. Uh, somebody in Australia's read about it, decided to brew it, and here we are drinking an Australian traditional french style of beer unbelievable isn't it unbelievable it is at 7.4 percent 7.4 percent abv 330 milliliter can it's got that the lovely little kind of dog logo it looks like a british pit bull or something along the lines one of those dogs that i've got a nose on it it's probably called a frenchie isn't it probably <laughs> i don't know much about dogs uh, without further ado then, let's get this can out into a glass, see what we get. A little bit of smoke on the can opening. Beer in the glass. So everybody bangs on about French wine. Everybody thinks of France and they think of wine. But an interesting fact about France is that they have or they did have, things have, might have changed over the last couple of years, but they have the most breweries in a country, per country, or you know, per capita, or whatever it is. They have the most breweries in the world for a country, in France. But you never, you never kind of hear of them. You never, you know, I... I, I my parents took me to France, and it was their favourite place to go years ago. Um, my parents loved their wine. But we, we'd go to uh, all over the south of France, and then we'd go to Paris, and uh, I was always in France as a kid. I just don't remember thinking about France, probably because I was a child, but I don't remember thinking of France and thinking breweries. You think of Germany, you think of breweries. You think of Belgium, Belgium, you, you, you think of breweries and Marrow and Fellaini. <laughs> uh, yeah, you don't think of France and think beer, do you? You don't think of France and think breweries. But there we are, there we are. Uh, good levels of carbonation. It's got a slight red hue to the beer. A, a, a red hue, but definitely dark amber in colours, heading towards mahogany in the colour. Uh, this slow moving carbonation rolling up the middle of the glass. Let's get the aroma. Whoa. A little bit of treacle. Treacle, licorice. Mmm. It smells like. A Belgian double, but without the Belgian yeast. Really biscuity and malty and fruity from the hops. Like mixed fruit jam, plum jam, strawberry jam, raspberry jam. Wafer. Touch of pipe tobacco smoke. This smells divine. Let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. First thing I noticed about the beer is the hiss and the fizz of the carbonation. It doesn't look an overly carbonated beer, does it? But you get a little kind of hiss and a fizz of carbonation just to help push that beer on the inside of the mouth remind yourself that it's not a, like you know it's not a flat beer it's got some carbonation it's got a nice creamy rich body 
it's not overly done. I would say kind of it's edging towards a a, a medium body beer. You get them. You definitely get the malts coming through. Little bit smoky. Little bit biscuity and bready. You're picking up a little bit of raisin on the back end. But plum. Very good. It's a it's a it's a really decent beer, especially for that 7.6% ABV. It's definitely it's definitely very drinkable. It's not overly chewy, it's not overly kind of it's not overly malty, it's not overly medium in the mouthfeel. It's just just below medium. So there's enough for you to go to get your your gums bumping and, 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 and the beer sticks to your lips a bit and the inside of your mouth, but it's not enough that you feel like it's an imperial stout, you know, where it's overly kind of bodied. I say overly bodied for imperial stuff, so that's fine. But I think for beer the gas, yeah, you want you want to hold on to that drinkability. It's just nice. It's just it's nice. It's it's almost relaxing. It's almost got that kind of edging towards dare I say it, but I really don't mean it in a diastole way. It's slightly edging towards that slightly kind of biscuity, slightly nutty, slightly kind of butterscotchy feeling and flavour. But it's not, I promise you, it's not diacetol. It's, it's just slowly leaning into being slightly nutty and biscuity and butterscotch-like. But it's interesting. It's interesting. The, the the plum, the fig, the prune, the kind of like that's like kind of red grape flavours coming through. Yeah, it's decent. Decent beer. The biscuit malt comes through, the nuttiness. Not overly bitter. Now the thing with beer de gads is that they're not supposed to be really bitter. They're not really supposed to kind of smack you in the face with hops. It's a subtle plum, fig, prune finish on the beer so what are we saying then uh, multi complex and enticing this beer de gad pours a deep ruby color with notes of toasted bread crust caramelized dark stone fruits and spice on the nose it does exactly that the lean body allows the strength of the malt to shine finishing on a subtle fruit red fruit note uh, beer for food and friends. So the hops are two out of five in terms of scale. The malt is four out of five in terms of scale. And this is a little bit about Frenchies. At Frenchies Bistro and Brewery, we celebrate the bistronomy culture on the plate and in the glass. We are 100% independent and we brew all our beers in our rows and Roseberry venue, Vincent and Thomas. It's great, isn't it? Great. I love it. Love the fact that I, I, I don't know if they're a large bistro or a small bistro. You know, I don't know if they're just centered around a small town. You just don't know. It's the other side of the world. But I bet they love it. I bet they. I bet they're watching this, and they, I bet they're thinking, "Look, my neck." You know, we're watching it. This is in South Wales, old South Wales, in the UK. Um, I bet the next time, the next time Wales play Australia in the rugby, I bet there's a little conversation. I bet there's like because I think about whenever Wales play Australia now in the rugby. I always think about all the Australian brewery beers that I've drank and enjoyed and, you know, it, it's not so heavy when they thrash Wales then, is it? Um, it's not so kind of like, you're not so heavy hearted when you get thrashed by the Australians because they got such great breweries. Uh, you don't mind so much. 
And I, and I bet they, I, I bet they're like, oh, I wonder if that Welsh fella's watching the rugby right now. The one who reviews them beers on YouTube. <laughs> you like to think these things, don't you? Why not? Why not? It's the beauty of the internet. The fact that we're all engaging, we're all kind of getting involved and, um, and, and we've all come together over something we love, which is, which is beer, wherever you are in the world. I'm going to rate this one. It's really good. Good aroma, good taste, good flavour. Nutty, biscuity, bready, hoppy, but not overly bitter. Yes, yeah, good. I like it. Let's give it an 8 out of 10. It's an 8 out of 10 from Real Ale Craft Beer. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom. Cheers.